Hello folks, welcome back. I'm back from my little break. Yep. Yeah, I didn't catch payback. For some reason, I don't know. I got WWE does it to me, I got wrestled out. But I'm back here for Monday Night Raw. And of course, as always, I have to give my little thank you shout out. Nolo King! You, sir, might be superior. <laughs> So let's get right into some Monday Night Raw action. So again, my throat's a little bit hoarse because I think Saturday I had to talk through face masks over race cars. Sunday I just had to talk to customers through a thicker mask. And today's my day for <laughs> me, 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 me. my voice to recover. So let's get this show started. The quicker I do this, the quicker I can recover. Yes. And it starts off with Randy Orton. That's a promo. Um, Keith Lee's there. He jumps in. And then Dolph. Dolph. What are you doing? He decided to jump Keith Lee. Not the brightest idea around. But it does lead to our first match, which is Keith Lee taking on Dolph Ziggler. Um, yeah. Dolph Ziggler tried to do stuff. Keith Lee kind of no-sold for a while. Uh, Dolph got backed into a corner. And Keith Lee, whap, Magnum slapped him. Double slaps across the chest. <laughs> Dolph got pounced. That was so good to watch Dolph get pounced for some reason. I don't know why. But, I mean, he can sell so good. Um, he came back, hit the Famouser. No, no, no. That had no effect against Keith Lee. Um, let's see here. Yep. Nice big kind of flapjack thing. Keith Lee's so big. He can kind of do whatever he wants. Um, Dolph, again, he's just really the gatekeeper to this thing. Um, Keith Lee also hit the around a tour of the island slam. Getting made famous. No, not Samojo. It was um, Br Cobb. Jeff Cobb. I knew it was one of them. So that's what it kind of looked like to me. Um, Zolf Ziggler again. Trying to make his comeback. A quick zigzag out, out of nowhere too. Again, kind of more so annoyed Keith Lee than anything. Dolph, again, he ate a spirit bomb. Oh wow, Dolph. You are so good selling. We're not worthy to watch you sell. But I'll tell you what, this is a fun opening match. It was good. It kind of leads into the show. Solid cheeseburger match. Oh, my cat jumped into the closet. Thought I heard a weird noise. Um, then there was... In the new uh, little thing about the recap of the women's, women's champion, Sarah Schreiber looks actually pretty comfortable in that role. Taking over from Renee. Very similar look to Renee. Works for her. Um, interviews Nijax and Shanna Baszler. Yeah, the two don't like each other still. It's, it's kind of that whole like female version of the bar thing going on. Still pretty good. And Asa comes out, cuts a promo. Uh, Mickey James then comes out, says, "No, I should be next in line. I'm the six-time women's champion," which is true. Again, Mickey James still has that milf body too. And then Lana and Natalia. Oh, Lana! Lana makes fun of Mickey James's age. That's kind of old. Um, Natalia just looks and sounds like a Walmart mom. What can I say about that? So the next match we have Mickey James taking on Lana. Uh, they just kind of, I'll tell you what, there's that, Lana's, Lana learned something from Rusev, because she is a great snap suplex. Not necessarily has all the strength behind it, it still has a good little kick into it, that's really good to see. Um, Asuka's on commentary, Asuka is so great on commentary, I love it when she speaks Japanese, no one understands, um, who was it, uh. Byron Saxon's like, what? 
And then the other commentators were just apologizing for, for Byron's lack of Japanese. As far as I know, like, Asuka could be telling you how to make sushi. But still, it sounds great. And Asuka's gold on commentary. Whenever she decides to leave and go back to Japan, like, she could easily be a ring announcer something for, like, New Japan or Stardom. And that's always good to know. Um, again, every woman, including Lana, does that kind of hair pull takedown. Though that's getting kind of old because it used to be only a few people did that. Now everyone does it. I'll get to that later. Um, yeah, she she just had those slaps. Like she slapped Mickey James, and Mickey's just slapped her back, and Mickey's slap just seemed like twice as hard and twice as loud. Um, then she, then Mickey hit the Luthes press, dropping fists onto Lana. Uh, hit a couple of clotheslines to knock her down. Uh, Lana does the Yano break. She goes into the ropes. Say no, 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 break, 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 break. She learned that from Yano. Everyone's stealing stuff from Yano. That's that's terrible. I feel so bad for him. Everyone's stealing his stuff. That's not cool. Uh, eventually, again, out of the ropes. Very quick mid kick, and Lana gets KO'd. This was actually kind of fun and enjoyable. It was a ham sandwich. Then Sarah's back, and she interviews the Iconics. The Iconics have a loser breaks up match versus the Riot Squad. Again, something that happened. Um, from what I heard and what I saw, Payback just seemed like a good version of Raw. I think having SummerSlam and Payback kind of back-to-back. -back. After big pay-per-views, I like to tranquil a little bit, relax, recover. Um, then we have Randy Orton and, Kev and Kevin Owens. Uh, Randy Orton makes his way to ringside. Kevin Owens comes out, just gets black mass by Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens is like it's all wobbly on rubber legs. Goes in the ring, tells the ref to ring the bell. Uh, Kevin Owens gets like a couple of hits on Randy Orton. One RKO does it. It was okay. It kind of set things up. More so for Kevin Owens versus Aleister Black. I can see where they're going with this. I mean, I'd want to see Randy Orton in a triple threat match. And possibly in a title match. It's a ham sandwich. Then we have the U.S. Champ recap. Again, it's always good to see the Hurt Business. Bobby Lashley looks great with that belt, by the way. Um, then we have the kind of challenge match. It's Cedric Alexander and the Viking Raiders taking on the Hurt Business. Again, I'll tell you what, this was amazing because for, for a long time it was pretty hard-hitting. Sheldon Benjamin took a brunt of the abuse. Eric, yeah. Eric, again, got his licks in. It just seems like the Viking Raiders are having fun when they're allowed to do their New Japan pro wrestling style. Um, with that being said, um, eventually MVP gets in. Uh, Cedric takes it. He takes it to MVP for a while. But MVP are smart Cedric. Again, the one thing you can say... Age and treachery will always overcome youth and exuberance. Yep, that's always true. The old guys always win against like old man muscle, and you get like experience. You don't you realize like yeah, this is gonna be a fight. I'm not gonna go all out unless I really have to. I'll hold back, buy my time, let the guy punch himself out. And MVP thinks like that. Very smart wrestler. Uh, let's see here. So from there, Lashley steps in. That snap suplex of the float over covers great. MVP, he has a haluva kick. He tags himself, but he, he gets back in, hits the haluva kick on Cedric. Again, another snap suplex to float over cover. It's good stuff. Then to an arm bar. Again, the heels, they want to slow that pace down. Then, let's see here. A little distraction because the Hurt Business took out the Viking Raiders on the outside. MVP's like, yeah, go get him. While MVP said that, he fell susceptible to the surprise roll-up. 
Yep, the distracted wrestler syndrome again. Cedric and the Viking Raiders win. Solid cheeseburger match. Again, this was actually a pretty decent Raw. With the notion that Payback would have been a really darn good Raw. So, the reason why they had Payback? I don't know. But, yeah, this was actually a pretty pretty good um, after pay-per-view show. It just seemed like like Raw was yesterday and this is like the follow-up follow Raw. Which WWE has been known to do. They have a really good Raw and then a not-so-good Raw. So... That's the way that goes. Then we have the Iconics take on the Riot Squad. Um, wow, the Iconics, they do so good. Their double team is so smooth, so crisp. It's really good. Again, Peyton Royce and Billy Kay, they have lungs forever. They're great talking in the ring, even though they do have the piped and crowd music. They have Thunderdome. It's still really good to hear the wrestlers talk and communicate. Um, mainly just trash talk, because there you still like there like there's a crowd there. You can still see them kind of looking look into the I guess TV screens, and the, you know they have to chuckle when they see like Kenny Omega. They see we've seen Kenny Omega, Donald Duck, Pikachu, um, a teddy bear, a couple of guys sleeping, someone shaving, someone held up a sign. I think. To me, it sucks. That was pretty cool to see. Again, if I did that, I'd have a sign that says Vince fears Tamiya, and I'd have a beach ball somewhere. I would figure that out. I think someone had like a picture of like their their cat online too. That was kind of funny. So they have to be enjoying this. Uh, Ruby uh, Ruby Wright then fights out of the corner. Liv gets the tag. Liv is so f improved. I'm absolutely shocked and amazed at how much Liv has come. I mean, in a wrestling sense. Don't get dirty thoughts out there, YouTube. But how far she's progressed from her days in NXT. Whereas I think like the one that I saw in Daytona Beach, she was just like pissed off to be here. So again, it's good to see her enjoying herself again. That's always a good sign. What's the old saying? Um, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. I just work too much, but that's a whole other issue. Soon, that boat shall be mine. Um, again, the, the the only my only critique is that everyone does every heel does that hair hair pull takedown. Peyton Royce did that. Um, Billy Billy Kay and I want to say Ruby Wright started to trade pin attempts, uh, rolling through each other. Billy Kay eventually gets stacked up. I feel so bad. The Iconics were so good. Billy K might... I don't know. I know Peyton Royce. There's, there's two things. One is an absolute rumor. Which is probably garbage anyway. Two. Peyton Royce is going into more fitness competitions. Maybe she'll be out for a while. Who knows? Like, the first absolute garbage rumor was that the, the Billy K is pregnant. Whoa. Again, that baby fever once. Oh, Becky Lynch. Seth Rollins, see what you did. Who knows? Maybe he did. Who knows? Um, this was a fun match. Ruby Riot picked up the win. The Riot Squad st stays together. Iconics. Have to go their separate ways. Someone's, if 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 the totally unfounded rumor isn't true, someone's probably off to NXT. They they could use a little bump in their women's division because I think, like the lower third of their women's division is now like in retribution or something like that. So yeah, it is what it is. Again, it was an okay match. Ham sandwich. And it's fun because uh, P 
Peyton Royce and Billy Kay, they kind of do do the heelish thing. They get on their knees. Please, referee, don't split us. No, please, please. They start crying. They hug each other. Good TV. Then there's a recap of all between the Mysterio family and Seth Rollins. This leads to uh, Seth Rollins and Murphy came out. A little promo and recap. Uh, Dominic comes out, just jumps poor Murphy. Because remember, Murphy cost Seth Rollins that tag team match at that very good Raw that was payback. Uh, so now the set stuff for Dominic. Take on Seth for that third spot in the triple threat tonight. Um, I, I kind of wished Dominic would have won. I'll tell you what. Dominic Mysterio has learned from some of the best. He's learned from his father, Rey Mysterio. I'm sure he's learned something from Chavo. Um, I'm sure Eddie Guerrero kind of kind of tussled with him in the ring before and or after shows. And he, is, he probably knows so many members of the Lucha family. Dominic's going to be something special. They might have to tweak his packaging a little bit. If that's my only critique on Dominic Mysterio, ugh, who am I to say? If they put a mask on him, again, calling him Prince Mysterio, because he has such that, such a youthful, non-grizzled baby face, he does look kind of young compared to the other people in the ring. I mean, he's definitely the same Build for the most part as his dad, but just bigger, which means he's a he's a little chunkier than Seth Rollins, but still, Seth Rollins is tiny. I'm sure if you put, I'm, I almost want to say Dominic's probably bigger, bigger overall than, oh, definitely Adam Cole, baby, baby, bang. So again, this was a fun. I'll tell you what, I'm still so impressed. I couldn't do half, half that stuff, even with like, even my prime when I actually did moonsaults and stuff off the top rope once. Um, I took a pretty good bump from a double choke slam. That was kind of fun too. Uh, again, Dominic, he jumps, he, then he jumps Seth, uh, does the Mexican arm drags. He learned that from, from Lucha School somewhere. You could have learned that. You could have picked that up from Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn used to do a lot of that. El Generico! And then, yep, Seth. Again, we go go to break. Seth, being the heel, slows down the match. Puts him in the abdominal stretch. Then a body sitters. The only thing I don't like necessarily is like the rear bear hug. Because it's just a rear waist lock. It's not. In a bear hug, you're supposed to squeeze like across the chest. And you're supposed to really contract. Like, that's just a rear waist, waist lock. Illegal in college wrestling because you can't lock the hands. But is it going to hurt? It's going to be annoying. Probably at best. But it's not really going to do anything. Um, then Dominic, he hit the Buckle Rana. It's my new mo name for it. Because I guess, I know they've banned the Buckle Bomb. But because in the Buckle Rana, like, the opponent literally does his own flip into it. I guess they figure since you're doing your own flip into it, it's a little bit safer. You have a little bit more control over the way things go. Let's see if I move this over here a little bit. Oh, that sounds a little bit better. Uh, not really. One day I do need to get that snowball mic, but that's a whole other issue. Christmas gift. Um, what else? Uh, Dominic, again, he had the Buckle Rana. Again, Dominic, he has a, he did a standing moonsault. God knows I couldn't do that. I'd freaking break my neck or something. Um, let's see here. Then standing moonsault at 619. He missed his frog splash. Rollins eventually hits the stomp. Dominic, great showing. Applaud you for it. Again, really good. Wow, a surf and turf match, though. Then we have Raw. It's time, it's time o'clock. So, you know what that means? It's time for Raw Underground. 
This is becoming a little bit more of a mess, but now they've kind of, at least, it's an organized mess now. Um, starts off, Titus was sitting on some jobber, yeah. It's a judo throw, then just headbutt, and like, that was the end of that. What was impressive, though, what actually I found really impressive, is that Riddick Moss actually came in the ring, gave Titus O'Neil a really good kind of MMA-style fight. Uh, let's see here, some of the action involved. I mean, Moss, again, good single, but good single leg takedown, then body shots, uh, Titus O'Neil got up, uh, Moss brought him back down with a double leg takedown, and then some ground and pound, uh, Moss tossed outside, they continue to fight, they go back in, and then on the inside, I think the only down point of this match is that Rick Moss kind of did win after a straight kick to the nuts, and then just like a freaking wall finger right, like downward driven right hand. So, yeah, you get kicked in the nuts to get hit by the right. You're out of here anyway. So, Riddick Moss won. I'll tell you what. Because he put up a pretty good fight against Titus O'Neil. I can't believe I'm going to say this about Underground, but this is actually a cheeseburger match. Because, yeah, it's not even worth it talking. Like, I would say it's a piece of toast, but, like, the first thing against Jaro was a piece of toast. It wasn't even, it was just, like, like crumbs from the floor. But, so that's okay. Uh, and then we have the Street Profits. Come out, give a little thing. Um, then for the 24-7 title, Akira Tozawa got tricked to coming outside of his van with his ninjas. It was a referee dress up in a security person. You can't do that. You can't impersonate security. I'm pretty sure that's fairly illegal. Um, our truth snuck out. <sighs> I'm kind of sick and tired of these roll up victories by our truth, like sneaking around out in the middle of nowhere. Our <sighs> truth won with it just a, a straight roll up. This is a piece of toast. Uh-oh, I wasn't paying attention to my time. Because the next match was the Street Profits taking on Angel Garza and Andrade. And this is definitely a match up the wheelhouse of Angel Garza and Andrade that they should have won. Again, coming from a lucha background. El Idolo! And Angel Garza, just, just with his own heritage and working in, in, in the lucha style, again, Tornado should have been easy for them. Um, Garza and Andrade, they start off Again, as soon as the bell rings, they, they jump the Street Profits. They get um, Angelo Dawkins out of the ring. They begin to beat up Montez Ford. Again, there's a Tower of Doom spot. Um, what else was there? Ford. And he begins to clean house. <sighs> and then the lights flicker on and off. And you know what's going to happen. The funny thing is, Garza went running out of there. Along with Blondie, so that was really funny to see. Hey, at least he did the honorable thing and took his girl with him, whereas Andrade and Zelina Vega just got jumped by people. Um, so yeah, Retribution shows up. This match is a wash. Uh, I want to know where Alistair Black was to protect his wife, though. Indeed. Overall, eh. I'm so, I, they still haven't sold me on retribution. This is a this is a can of soup match. And we see Bay, uh, Peyton Royce and Billy Kay down in the underground. Yep, they're are, they're still really sad that they have to break up. Um, Jasmine Dukes fights Avery. Someone, yeah, just exactly the way you thought it would happen. Jasmine Dukes beats her up. That's the end of that. Toast. Maria Shafir comes in in like a full dress, which was amazing because she has like a little mommy butt on her now. But then she would just like choke someone out. And again, it's really, really, like, this is what, this is kind of what you expect anyway. 
piece of toast match. And then um, Shane McMahon asks if either of the Iconics would like to jump in. Peyton Royce tosses poor Billy Kane in the ring. She just gets kicked. Out of here, done. Then we have Apollo Crews, Ricochet, and Cedric. They kind of introduce them. Again, this was actually fairly entertaining. Uh, Shelton Benjamin versus Apollo Crews. Again, I like the fact they tie up. They do some dirty boxing, some knees. A high crotch single leg takedown. That's really good. Uh, Shelton Benjamin gets into the mount. Benjamin somehow from the bottom position. And this is, again, wrestling because it's all a work. There's no way he could really get a Kimura in from the bottom. Um, Shelton Benjamin probably should have gone for that Juju Katami. Or at least an uh, arm triangle, like, real early if you really wanted to finish it off early. So, hey, Sheldon Benjamin just leaving his arm right there. Oh, yeah. Take me. Take me. Break me. Break me. Choke me out with my own arm, please. That's the way that goes. But, yeah. Um, again, they stand up. They go outside. And then a brawl just starts out. Again, not bad. The fact that they're actually trying this, they're making it give that MMA underground feel, and they actually do legit moves to each other. I'm sure they're worked. It's still a good ham sandwich of a match. Like that. Um... Then we get, um, so backstage, you see Angel Garza um, and Blondie there. They try to escape. They hear the door, door open. Angel Garza looks at them, looks at Blondie, looks back at them. He just runs and leaves poor Blondie. Blondie, of course, runs off on her own. Again, that was kind of funny. Retribution just kind of eyed him after they beat up the security guy. They're like, yeah, who knows this security guy? He's not fun anymore. That's who we want to get. That was kind of fun. Um, then we have the main event, Randy Orton versus Keith Lee versus Seth Rollins in a triple threat match. This was actually really fun. It made everyone look strong. It protected really all the wrestlers who had to kind of lose. Because, um, you know, out of three people, only one part uh, from three people, only one's going to win. So, again, you do have to do that right. Um, Orton slides out of the ring. He's like, I'll let you guys fight it out after he talks with Seth a little bit. Yeah, he's a viper. Of course, he's going to turn on you. What would you expect? Uh, Keith Lee picks up Seth. Uh, so then Seth goes outside. Uh, they, Seth and Orin start to argue. Keith Lee picks Seth up by the hair. Um, Seth tries to uh, go, go after Keith Lee. Yeah, that's not happening. Uh, Keith Lee in the corner has a, has a slingshot crossbody on both Orton and Seth because they double teamed him for a little bit. Um, Seth again, they go back to the outside. Seth hits a flying knee. The table, the desk, the, the no cells again. Um, Randy Orton dumped Keithy on the desk. Desk, no sold. Wrong gimmick desk. Then uh, Keith Lee gets double team sent to steps. They try to go, they push Keith Lee back in the ring. Orton hits a draping DDT on Seth Rollins as he's climbing in. Again, never trust the Viper. Um, from there, again, Seth gets tossed into Orton by Lee. That was great. Orton eats a pounce on there. Back in the, a lot of wrestling on the outside. Orton sees a pounce on the outside. Again, the desk no sells when Keith Lee tried to put Seth Rollins through desk. Again, the desk did not read the script. Um, Seth in the ring. Orton's on the outside. Seth and Keith Lee in the ring. Seth Rollins eats the spirit bomb. Whoa, after, I think, one of them got hit with the tour of the island. Yeah, Jeff Cobb. I mentioned that before with Adolf. But Seth Rollins eats a spirit bomb. Um, just as Keith Lee was going to pin him. Randy Orton, RKO Keith Lee. A really good protected loss from Keith Lee. Seth, yeah, he doesn't have to go after any title. Randy Orton makes that match interesting. This was another good surf and turf match.
And again, with that surf and turf match, this was actually a kind of enjoyable Raw. I'll say it's a solid, yeah, cheeseburger Raw. And again, so the rest of this week's schedule is kind of odd. Um, Wednesday, I have stuff to do. Thursday, I'm doing predictions. Tuesday is my very typical live streaming of Impact Wrestling. We'll figure out what card's there. Um, Saturday, I think I'm going to be doing just a review. Or maybe I'll do a live... Maybe we'll do a live stream. I don't know. Let's figure out what I want to do for Saturday for AEW show. And that's it. So I actually get to kind of take a break. I do have stuff to do Wednesday. So I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, 